Last Wednesday, I released a video that talked about finding every Apex domain or root domain that belongs to a company. And of course, you guys flooded me with questions of what's the next step? What do I do? How do I look for vulnerabilities? So instead of covering the reconnaissance part and telling you go do recon and look for these things, I've done something even better by partnering with Trickus. Before we jump into the video, let me make it clear. This is not a sponsored video. I've only partnered with the folks at Trickus to give you access to their data for free. So if you're a bug bounty hunter, this data is 100% for free. You can access it use it and do whatever you want with this data but if you are an engineer you work for an organization please consider getting a business account and also unlocking some of the other parts of trickers including their asm vulnerability scanning their dynamic application security testing and their organization osen solutions that they offer but now that we get that out of the way let's talk about what do we do with all this data what can we do after we scan every single bug bounty program that's out there on hacker one and bug crowd and what are the approaches and how can we leverage this data using the trickers platform getting access to this data is super super easy all you have to do is go to the trickers website click on sign up right here and click on community please again remember this is free as long as you're a bug bounty hunter and security researcher if you are a business please consider getting a business account and taking advantage of all the different solutions that they offer but for this now we're going to click on community fill out this form and once you fill out the form and log in it is going to bring you to their dashboard that looks similar to this i have some runs and scans that i've done in the past you can see i've Use this pretty fairly recently and all you have to do is click on solutions and then go to the public tab and here is going to give you the asset inventory of millions and millions of assets that we have scanned across all the bug bounty programs that are out there. So let's dive into it and kind of look at what this looks like. At a first glance, you have the data in front of you. All you have to do is open up the sidebar right here on the left and you can see the data sets that are available. The three that I want to talk about today that I think are the most important to me at least as a bug bounty hunter is one, the DNS record. Then we're going to talk about the host names and then the web servers. So this one, for example, with DNS, the cool thing about DNS is this is for most of you that love automation and maybe you want to look at some of the DNS records or even maybe look at some of the subdomain takeover. It will let you actually sort this by response code. You can look at the value, you can look at the host, and you can also look at the type of records that are available. So for example, if I wanted to look for a record type that is maybe a C name, I can just type that in and search for it. But that's already something easy we can do. I mean, again, you can't do every bug bounty program that's out there. But what's really cool that you can do here is you can also add another search to this and we can actually look for every response code that isn't the no error. So all right here you see is everything that has no error right here is what we're seeing. But maybe I want to do something like, hey, I want to see stuff that is no error. Maybe I'm looking for a server fail. Maybe I'm looking for subdomain takeovers, DNS takeovers, and here is where it gets really, really interesting. So you can actually use the API. That's all for you to figure out on your own. If you're a top bug bounty hunter and you have the skill sets, this should be really easy. But just looking at this data, we have a ton of data that we can play with. If you look at the value table right here, the value is the C name value or the record value that it has found. So if I wanted to look for something that has the value set to maybe something with Amazon in it, I can search for that and see what is pointing to different maybe EC2 instances that came with Sir Fail, for example, if that is what I'm looking for. So that's just an example of looking at the DNS layer of this entire application and all the data that they have given us. Very, very cool stuff. I love just data in general and talking to Nanat, their co-founder at Trickus, I've been just nerding out with him saying, dude, this is really, really cool data because I can just dumpster dive and look for very, very niche and specific things that are interesting to me, whether it's on the DNS level, whether it's on the web servers itself, which we'll talk about in just a bit. But now let's look at the next thing, which is looking at the host names. And this one is not so much for the bug bounty purposes for me personally i'm sure you can get creative of how you would use all this but the thing that is the most creative or maybe important to me is looking at how these were discovered so for example if i have a piece of uh, subdomain in here for example and let's say i don't have this subdomain uh, right here i'm just going to zoom in really quick if i don't have this subdomain value for example i can actually find out how this was found by looking at the discovery context which tells me hey I found this subdomain by going to tumblr.com, feeding tumblr.com to Wayback Machine or the Wayback Archives, and then using some OSINT sources. This is a really good place to improve your data sets, but also kind of looking at, hey, what are the different things that Trickers has done in order to find these? And you can see right here is Superbet, for example. There's some value right here that they have used to go through certificate transparency and just finding this trading stage uh, Superbet uh, 
entire host name or environment that they have. So that's just one use case of using the host names, which we can get out of the way. But now the most important, and I think the, the coolest one or the most interesting one out of all of them is looking at the web servers. And I think this is where a lot of bug bounty hunters and a lot of the hackers kind of lack the resources or the next steps of, hey, what do I look for? Everybody else is running HTTPX. I don't want to run that. What program do I go after? So now you have every program. It just comes down to creativity and finding your niche that you want to hack into. And what is that niche or what are the types of bug bounty programs or the types of vulnerabilities that you want to look for within this program? And now this is the web servers tabs. And I think this is the most fun we're going to have with this data set. And it's because it has every bit of information that I actually need as a hacker. And personally, I think this is the most valuable to look for potential leads because if you're a bug bounty hunter, you know leads are how you're going to find vulnerabilities. The leads are the things that you, based on your experience or even based on the vulnerabilities that you have read or exploded in the past, you can manipulate or recreate those same exact scenarios. To get started, let's just first look at what does this data look like? What are the different parts of it? And what parts are we going to dig into to find more and more content. So at a first glance, you have your URL, which is probably the asset that we have scanned. This is the sites that we have scanned. We have the title, which is, as you guessed it, the title of that website. You have the status code, you have the content type, whether it's application, text, HTML, whether it's uh, something else, maybe it's an image, who knows. But you also have your length, your words and lines. Those are just metadata on whether this actual application serves something or maybe it's just an error page of some sort. And then you have your final URL, which is where this website finally ends up at. So sometimes you can see in this case, uh, at the bottom right here with the one before last with ArtStation, we are ending up in actually the one above it right here, the one with Frightliner, I think that's what the domain is. You can see that it is ending in this entire path after going to sign mind sign minder agent, whatever the forms is, it's going there and you can see where it ends up at. And we also have a lot of other ones. If we look on the left here, these are all the columns that are available that we can take a look at. So for example, if you're looking at just finding applications based on their title, we can just simply do a query right here that says the title is maybe a regex. In that regex, we can put something like login and maybe we find applications that are behind login, which if you are a bug bounty hunter that is looking for applications to rip apart, obviously this is the go-to for you to find those applications to be able to sign up, get an account and look for your traditional OWASP top 10 or your IDORs or SSRFs or XSS and so on. This is probably where I would go and spend most of my time, but again, it depends on my mood and what I want to get done. But as you can see on the screen, right here we have all these login pages and if i go to the last page this should give us a good number of assets it looks like it's five pages of assets right here that we can take a look at and some of them are behind saml and some of them are not Besides the point, you have the data here, so you can base on the title. Maybe you're looking for something that has an internal error or maybe something else that you want to look for. You can see right here, there's an internal corp site, which is really, really cool, but there's also a different approach to finding corporate sites. And that's not by just looking at the title. We can actually go down here. And if we look at all these different search columns that we have, there's actually a column called headers that I can search through for all the data sets that we have in here. So for the headers, for example, one of the things that I really like to do when I have all of my assets scanned and I have all the data that I need is looking for assets that are actually being sent over to a SAML. For example, if uh, we're looking for SAML itself, we can type that in and see if anything comes up as an example and looks like, wow, there is a ton of it. Uh, a lot of GitHub stuff, so I can actually, let's see what this looks like. It's a GitHub under Ford. We can test and see if this properly navigates. If I do explore, it doesn't work, but you can see that there are a lot of internal assets that are coming up, but we can also go very much more specific. Maybe it's not SAML that I'm looking for. Maybe I know company X that I'm hacking on uses something like one login and they always redirect all of their assets to one login. And that's another use case for it. So we can see right here that Uber internal has a lot of domains, uh, maybe one on port 8880. We can also visit this if we wanted to. That is also being sent to uh, one login and I can kind of 
play around with it and see if I can uh, bypass this. Maybe they have some misconfigurations that allows us to find assets that are behind that SAML or one login. So that's also another approach that we can take a look at. There are some other things we can do. We can look for maybe assets that are getting redirected to a Swagger file. Maybe I'm looking for applications that are APIs and maybe those APIs actually have some of their data leaked. So we can actually look at this also as well. Uh, so let's see if anything actually goes to Swagger JSON. maybe. Let's see if that comes up. Maybe we can do Swagger UI.html. That's a very common one. And what this is doing is, is looking at the location header of this entire data set and telling us which ones are getting redirected to Swagger. Maybe that one doesn't work. Now we can look at something other than Swagger. Maybe I want to do API docs. Maybe something like that works. But it looks like none of those one other work. Maybe none of these assets actually go to Swagger. One of the things that we can try is we can also look at the the column right here, the final URL, and see if any of them match a regex that have Swagger in it. Maybe it's something like that would work. So let's see what this looks like. And it looks like a lot of them actually now it works. So we can see there's a ton of Ford. There is uh, some Citrix. So let's see what the next page looks like. With this page number four. It looks like there's a lot of those actually here. But we can click on these, for example, this one. I've copied it, and we can visit this URL, and we have a Swagger in front of us. Maybe we have a Swagger XSS. Maybe I'm just looking to find documentation and NPI endpoints on a particular company that I can hack the API and find vulnerabilities within it. So, so far, I kind of talked about generating leads based on our interests. So these are your interests of finding maybe APIs, maybe looking for Swagger or documentation, or even maybe looking at internal assets that are behind a SAML or a one login or something like that, or even going as far as looking for applications that are behind authentication that you can sign up for and look for vulnerabilities. But what if we want to look for assets that are internal maybe they are a part of the ci cd pipeline or maybe they're a part of just internal tooling that may have vulnerabilities or may have misconfigurations or even better maybe they have known cves that we can exploit let's jump into it and take a look at what that looks like and how we can find those based on the headers and if we go back to our data set so for this first example i'm going to take a look at something like gitlab we can do that by just looking at the headers and we can look for anything that matches the regex x dash GitLab and doing that it's going to look at all the headers and bring back the ones that match this and just to make it a little bit easier I'm going to rearrange some of this I'm going to just do maybe something like just show the URLs show the title and maybe we can just have it show the headers right here and I want to put the headers right here so I can show you what they look like I'm going to drag them so if we look right here, it is looking at every single bit of the headers in here, which you can see you have the cookies, you have the server being Nginx, and the one that we're looking for, I'm just going to quickly search for it is, one is looking for GitLab in the cookie. That's one way you can identify GitLab. But if you look for X GitLab, you can see right here, there's an X GitLab meta header that is very, very specific to GitLab being self-hosted. And if we look at this data right here, we can see there is a lot of different ones that we can open and take a look at, including GitLab.net itself. But you can kind of look at these and maybe find ones that have some misconfigurations. Let me open this one up again. It has maybe some misconfigurations where you can hit explore and maybe it exposes this one doesn't. Maybe it exposes something behind it and you can look for vulnerabilities, but that's not all. Let's do a couple more of these different products. I just want to kind of showcase the different things that you can look for because I see a lot of times a lot of people comment and say, oh, you're not showing us look for vulnerabilities. I don't want to spoon feed you with vulnerabilities, but I do want to teach you how you can actually dig into a large data set and find leads for yourself. So the next one we're going to look at is maybe something like Confluence. And honestly, I'm going to stop doing this at some point because I think you need to just kind of think of those products that are interesting to you, whether it's GitLab, whether it's GitHub, Confluence, maybe looking for Sonar, maybe looking for things like that are not included in this. But you just want to look at those. You can go to Showdown. You can go to the applications itself and see what makes them unique. And based on that identifier, whether it's a header, whether it's a cookie value, whatever that is, and you can look for it like I'm showing them to you right here. The other approach is just looking for for the cookie value, a lot of times I look for a lot of Java apps just because Java apps are very interesting to look at. And you can actually look for J session ID, which is something that usually you will see in a lot of Java apps in the cookie value. And it looks like a lot of them are coming up right now, a lot of service now, which probably not the best, but I like hacking on Java apps, especially if they have an API maybe on them. And if you look at this one, for example, 
we can see it's going behind it. unfortunately it's going behind another login but maybe we can bypass it no but there's a lot of times that i want to look at java applications that are really really interesting to me because approaching java apps especially apis if a lot of the path traversers you can go through you can look for things like jaloki and heap dumps you can look for actually tomcat for example and just there is so many cool recon and application vulnerabilities that come with it that's something that i focus on and the last one that i want to show also is the fave icon we can actually add this in this one right here i'm just going to add it to this and i'm going to actually uh, close headers because we no longer need it for what i want to show you right here so i'm just going to uh, go to headers and just remove it entirely but now that we have the fave icon we can actually search based on the fav icon or fave icon of a specific product or a specific application so what i'm going to do in this example is i'm going to look at a fave icon that is equal to this value and I'm going to show you what it looks like in just a sec. But looking at this, and we're just going to open this up. This one specifically that I have is a Jenkins fave icon. So sometimes you don't have to even look for the headers. You can actually fingerprint it based on the fav icon and look for it. But this goes a step beyond just looking at products or just tools, for example, like Jenkins. You can actually also do the same thing by looking at a company's fav icon. So what I'm going to do here is I'm going to actually look for a URL. And we're going to say this URL is going to equal, or actually it's going to match a regex that is Yahoo or maybe yahoo.com. And based on this, we have all these different regex numbers or these fav icon numbers that we can copy and use to find other assets that may be not included here. Maybe it's a subdomain. Maybe it is another domain that uses the Yahoo logo as a fav icon, and we can find that as well. So that's one of the tricks that I know a lot of hackers do, whether it's looking for assets or just looking for instance of, of vulnerabilities or projects or products that could be vulnerable. Now let's take a look at a more complex query here. And this is just to look for maybe some S3 buckets. I've written this already, but what we're doing here is we're looking at the content type and we're looking for it to be XML and application. I'll show you what that means in just a bit. The content length is because we wanna have some data in there. We don't want it to be blank. And we wanna make sure the URL itself is maybe a part of a static environment. So it has the word static somewhere in there and it does not have CDN in here. It does not have media and it does not have assets in it. We're doing a bunch of different queries we're putting them all together and we're saying hey we don't want with the with this right here we're saying we do not want it to include those and if we take that out uh, as an example i'm going to take images out maybe like this it's going to give us more data that is not as clean data but the point of this here is looking for specific leads by putting things together that we know based on our experience or maybe on another vulnerability that we have found or we have read about and fingerprinting that with doing this right here i'm telling it hey i want you to find everyone every one of these pages that's going to come back that looks like an s3 bucket and if i open this right here you can see that it is coming back the reason why we looked for application xml was obviously because we wanted to look for anything that has xml like this one and we're just also looking at the rest of it and if i actually tag this on here i'm going to show you what it looks like so i'm going to add content type right here because i want it to be shown and i'm going to add also url we actually have url right here and this is everything that we're pretty much giving it. We have the content type. The content link is one that's missing. We don't need that because we can also change this. It doesn't really matter. But here we can confirm all these different assets that are a part of this data set that could be potential S3 buckets. And then now that we have access to all these, what we can do is we can actually go through all these. I know a lot of these are JSON files that may be static and not really helpful, but there are sometimes you can find information within them or maybe some of these you can have read write access i haven't looked at s3 in a very long time so i don't know if that's even still a thing but if you can't read or write to it uh with the cli with aws cli then that's a vulnerability of itself i kind of want to showcase all these different things that you can look for the whole concept with recon comes down to just understanding what is this thing that i want to look for what is the niche of this spectrum of all this data that is really interesting to me how do i fingerprint for it and how do i search for it across which was what i was trying to demonstrate throughout this entire video so those are just examples of it if you're looking for a call to action in this video it, it tells you hey this is what i would do next well if i were you as a bug bounty hunter a hacker whoever you are that you're watching this video and you want to make some money from this or maybe you want to submit your first valid vulnerability is really think about what is it that you want to do what makes that thing that you're looking for in this case with the s3 buckets what makes it unique to that based on the headers the endpoints the content type the content length and maybe the name that could be in the url and look for those 
within this data set and see what you can find. And if you find something really, really cool, I keep looking down because there's so much data in front of me that I want to play with. But if you find something really, really cool, drop me in the comment. Let me know you found something. And if you have leads, come hang out on Discord. I will have people there, including myself, that we can help you with if you find a particular lead. All right, that's it. I will see you all in next week's video. Peace.